Hi all, this is Sean from Time and Talk. I just wanted to do a collection review, my own collection. Uh, it's probably not the most interesting collection in the world, to be honest, but I thought I would do one anyway because some people might be interested. And, you know, I'm proud of it in my own way. So, at the end of the video, I'll discuss some of the things that I would like to add. I have this box and this box alone, and it is eight watches. And I've not got any hard and fast rules, but I do I do want to limit a limit of eight if possible. And I want them to be different. I've allowed myself a little bit of a splurge in terms of numbers on swatches in the recent past, but they've uh, they've gone again in, in, in some cases. And I don't want to just buy watches for the sake of it. I want to buy them because I because I want to wear them. And that's another reason why I like watches that are different for different occasions and, and, and things like that. So I'm not probably sticking to my rules as much as I should, but I do try and make them different to each other. So um, this is a, um, a watch box. It's quite cool, but it's nothing fancy. I would like a really nice watch box, you know, to put the watches in, um, but not at this point. So I'll do them in, in, in no order. I was going to say I'll do them in some sort of order, but I, but I won't. So firstly is, is this watch. So this is a, a Tissot Automatics 3. It's, I think it's 40 millimeters or maybe 39. And it's the first watch, the oldest watch in this box. Um, I haven't got any watches from childhood or, or anything like that. And um, this is the watch that kind of got me into the, the hobby as it is now. Um, it's automatic. It's a cool watch, you know, it, I think it was about 400 pounds at the time. It's always on sale. And it's a great watch. It's a kind of first good watch, first good mechanical watch. It's, I really like the bracelet. I think it really suits me more than quite a lot of my other watches. Um, it's got a day and a date. It's really practical. Um, it's not got any water resistance, so that's something kind of a negative, I guess. But Tissot is a great company, you know. This has got an ETA in it, so it's really serviceable. And I would recommend this watch as, as someone to someone who's just getting into watches, wants to buy a first quality watch, or for, for maybe a present for an 18 year old or, or something like that as, their, as a nice watch that they can be proud of and they can wear. This is good because it looks good on other straps as well. And I think there's a, there's different dial configurations. There's a white dial. Um, the only thing about this watch is it's a little bit too similar to one of my other watches in terms of its aesthetics and size and stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't necessarily make great buying choices back in the day. Then, uh, the Casio F91W. I do wear this. I wear all the watches in the, in, in the box. I, I wear some more than others, but I do wear this. I, I wear it to the gym, and I wear it when I just want a cool little watch, but also it's, it's really practical in terms of it's comfortable, and it's light, so for example, if you're going out on a run, you want to time it. Obviously, it hasn't got hasn't got GPS and all that sort of stuff, but it but it is a, a fun watch. It's about eight quid, so you know, once you buy this, you might as well keep it <laughs> because you know you're not going to get seven quid back on the secondary market or whatever. Um, cool watch, and I'm really um, evocative of the '80s, obviously. Um, and I'm just whizzing through because it's just a bit of a discussion, really. So this um, Citizen Promaster Tough. Uh, it's titanium. Blue dial. There's a black dial version. There's one with a bracelet. Um, I bought this just before lockdown started. And it didn't come on this strap. This is um, a Zulu Diver orange rubber strap, which is cool. It looks quite good on it. This is a great watch. I would really recommend it. If you're watching this video and you're thinking, um, what kind of watch should I buy? If I want a tough watch for about 300 pounds, I would choose this because it's great. Uh, first time I saw it, I thought it was hideous with the oversized kind of Arabic numerals, but it's not for everyone and it's not a kind of smart watch, but it is, it is fantastic. It's really comfortable. It's really practical. It's water resistant to 300 meters. It's dead tough. Um, it's eco-drive, the loom's good, it's good, it's a nice watch, 
40 millimeters um, it looks good on some of the straps as well obviously not smart straps because it's not in any way a, a smart watch um, so we should do these at, at once two swatches I'm going to buy a swatch chronograph at some point in the near future um, I might even buy a moon swatch because you know why not you only live once and you may as well try them um, I actually had two 34 millimeter swatches up until recently and one just kind of stopped working and, and failed to um, perhaps shouldn't have done but I threw it in the bin um, this one is swatches collaboration with the Pompidou Center and with me being a Francophile somebody loves French culture I bought this because of that um, but to be honest I could pick a hundred swatches and still want more and I love I love wearing um, the 34mm ones because they just feel the right size for me. I think the, they fit much better on my wrist than the 41mm new gen version. And they just look cool. You know, you, you just... It feels a little bit irreverent to wear it with kind of certain clothes. And I, I like that kind of, kind of thing. I know it's, you know, uh, not really a big issue. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I like it. And this is a swatch skin. So I bought this on eBay. Um, a really thin watch, obviously. That's why it's called a skin. And again, it's 34 millimeter. It's got a kind of aftermarket strap on it. Um, yeah, but again, it's really cool looking. Let's see if we can focus on, on the dial a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I really like Swatch as a company. I mean, it's an interesting one because one of my New Year's resolutions is to be more sustainable and Swatch is not sustainable. It's I read something on Instagram or an article or something and it basically said Swatch is everything that people who are sustainable don't want to do. But no, I like I like the company. I think it's, it's they make interesting watches and I think aesthetically... If I wasn't into watches, I would still wear swatches. Whereas, if I wasn't into watches, I don't think I'd wear a Rolex. Um, yeah. And then separate these next two because they're very different. Um, so next is a Timex. This is called a, a Mark One, And again, it's 34 millimeter. This watch, when it first came, I was like, "This watch must be made out of paper because it's so light, and you, you're not, you're not going to get quality when you look at this watch." But I like all things Charlie Brown, all things Peanuts, um, because I'm a little child. So I bought this watch, and I think it's cool. Um, I think it's called a, it's an archive version. Basically, Timex have been making watches with Snoopy on and Charlie Brown on for a number of years since the '60s. And it's kind of a military-inspired design with Charlie Brown on it, with a with an umbrella. Um, it comes with two NATOs. And the NATOs are really poor quality, really thin. And but I, I really like this watch. I think it's fun and um, it's really comfortable to wear. And I like Charlie Brown, so yeah, that's pretty much the only reason. Um, final two are the watches that I wear the most in my collection so um this is cartier tank must um this watch is amazing i love it um it makes me feel dead stylish when i've got it on um i wear like smart casual clothes for work and it goes with that really well but this watch does i mean everyone says it's a cliche you know you can wear it with shorts and t-shirts and all that sort of stuff which is true i mean this watch just just I just I just love the way it looks. I love the aesthetic. It's quartz, and some people don't like that. But you know, if I had the money, I would buy a mechanical gold tank Louis. But I don't, so um, you know, here's hoping. If anyone wants to donate, um, the Solar I don't really get. I you know, it's just a quartz with a different name. Um, but the aesthetics of this are brilliant. I love it, and this is on um, a Delug strap, which. I love the strap that it came on, but this strap is just, I think it's brilliant. I think it's really cool as well. And yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing about 
nice clothes and nice watches. And when I say nice clothes and nice watches, obviously that's subjective, whatever you like. But if you find something that you like and that resonates with you and that you like meets with your identity, if you like, it just makes you feel good when you wear it. And this watch makes me feel good when I wear it. It makes me feel stylish. And, and even if I'm not, I can believe I am when I'm wearing this watch. Um, yeah, so maybe it's a little bit overpriced and it's a quartz, so watch people don't like that in some instances, but I think it's, I think it's amazing. I think it's cool. Um, and actually, uh, the next watch is by far the most expensive watch I own, um, but I wear this more. Um, I wear, I've worn it basically every day since I bought the Deluxe strap and it just makes me feel cool when I wear it. Maybe that's sad, but yeah, it does. Um, and then last but not least, um, the Rolex Explorer 214270. So 39 millimeters, big debate about which one, you know, the Mark One or the Mark Two. This is the Mark One with the white gold numerals, the unloomed and the short hands, which was controversial. Now they've brought back the 36 millimeter version. Um, a couple of times I've flirted with the idea of selling this, even recently, maybe buying something like an Air King, and I'm talking a 34 millimeter older Air King, um, and banking some of the money that I would have left over. But you know, I've had this for a long time, and this is probably gonna go up in value because it's probably rarer than the Mark II. And it is a cool watch. I mean, to, to be honest with you, new Rolexes I don't really like because they're too perfect. And the, the, the cold in the kind of blockiness and, and heaviness and the older ones are way more sophisticated and, and cool to me. But this has got some of that, I think, um, even though it's got some of the blockiness and, and, and it is a kind of modern case style, if you like. Really practical, the looms amazing, um, water resistant, you can wear it with any outfit. Um, it's, yeah, I really like it. Um, and in terms of things that I would like to add, I think the next watch that I will buy, three things I would like to add. I would like to add a chronograph, um, something like the speed timer, the Seiko speed timer, maybe a moon swatch, um, maybe a, a, a 90s swatch chronograph. I like chronos, they, they are useful. It's useful to be able to time stuff and to you know, have it on your wrist. Um, I would also like I don't I don't know if if if, if I'm ever going to buy another luxury watch but I would I would consider a couple of things so so either kind of a, a flashy watch so something that that's you know self-consciously flashy unself-consciously flashy like a date just two tone or something like that um or a kind of luxury in quotation marks diver um, the Tudor Black Bay 58. It's a cliche, but it, it's a, it is a great watch. I like really like the silver version, um, and that would be cool because it's a little bit like different, but it's also a diver. Um, or oh, the Tag Aqua Racer. I really like that watch as well. I, really, I think it's cool and it, it's really well proportioned, really well designed. Another thing is a Seiko diver. I'm definitely going to buy a Seiko diver at some point. Um, looking at the Captain Willard and the 62 mass kind of modern interpretation or even something like the GMT, the Seiko 5 GMT. I know that's not a diver, but it, it's got a diver's style case, if you like. So yeah, tell me what you think of my collection. It's uh, If it's dead boring, <laughs> please don't be mean. Um, and also tell me what, you'd like, what you would add to these eight watches that I have. If you like the video, please subscribe. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.